Hi guys, I hope you all are doing very well. Guys, uh, four days ago I made a video regarding PER queries and I asked all of you that if you have any query regarding the PER, you can send it to me through Google form, which I uh, provided you in the description of my video. Guys, I'm very happy to say that I've received almost 300 queries and uh, it, it's very good that you are showing that trust in me that if we you are sending some query to me you have a trust that Anshul sir will try to help you in that I'm very happy to say that so guys to maintain that trust I discussed everything with the ACC qualified person his name is Prashant Shankar he's a FCCA so what FCC is who FCC is I'll just read from ACC portal so that you get to know what a FCC is so FCCA status is the highest achievement awarded to a ACCA member after five years of continuous membership and continuous professional development compliance that is CPD compliance. So when an ACCA member is in continuous service of five years and there is a compliance that is CPD compliance after that a ACCA member can get a degree of FCCA. Okay, so FCCA is like a senior, it's, it's like a senior person. Okay, so Prashant Shankar is a FCCA and when I discussed all these things with him, he, without giving a second thought, he said, okay, Anshul, I will help all the students. So he was very happy to be a part of this video. And when I discussed all the queries with him, there were 300 queries. Of course, it's not easy for us to solve all the 300 queries. So what we did is, so we have divided video in three parts. He, he sent me a video in which he has solved all the queries, but that video is divided into three parts, which I'll be playing after I'll stop talking. So in the first part of that video, he has explained what exactly PER is. Okay, so everything about the PER is explained in the first part of the video. In the second part, he has explained by giving a live demonstration how you can log into your ACC portal and you can fill your performance objectives over there. You can fill the performance objective and how it is submitted to your senior, how he will be able to uh, verify it. So everything he will be telling you live in that video. He has opened the ACCA portal. He has entered a login and he has explained everything over there, which is the need of the R because a lot of students have that query. And in the third part, he has we have made some FAQs that is frequently asked question. So from all the 300 questions, we have summed it up in 20 questions in which all your queries will be solved. Okay, guys. So first thing that if you are looking for a particular query, you know everything about PER and you are just looking for a particular query that you have, what you can do, you can just go on the description of this video. You can search for the query that you have and click on the timing. You will be directly, re you, sorry, you will be redirected to that uh, question and you can get the answer. So there, there must be a lot of students who just need to have their query solved and they don't want to know about what PER exactly is. So you can just do the procedure that I said, it will save your time. But honestly, what I would suggest that you should watch this video completely so that after this video, you will not have any kind of doubt regarding the PER. Plus, there is one more thing which Prashant will be discussing in this video and we are working something for all of you which will be very helpful to all of you. Okay guys, so if you like this video, please click on the like button, share my channel, subscribe if you have not subscribed. So if you want to contribute something to my channel, if you feel like that I'm the work that I'm doing for you is good and you are getting a lot of queries solved and th these are very helpful video for you. So there is a thanks button in the uh, below part of that video on the YouTube channel. You can just click on thanks and you will be asked to pay some amount, whatever amount you want to, you feel you can pay, you can pay that. Okay guys. So now I'm switching over to the Prashant's video. So guys, please watch the video very carefully and uh, do comment whatever your uh, suggestions are and whatever you felt about this video. Hi guys, I'm Prashant Shankar. I'm a fellow member of ACCA. I have more than eight to nine years of work experience working for organizations like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, EY, etc. I started as an ACCA student then I became an affiliate by completing all the exams, then went on to become a member after my three years work experience. And right now, after five years of my work experience, I'm a fellow member. In this video, after I discussed with Anshul, I got a lot of questions and queries from Anshul's students. So I'm going to address all of the queries and the queries are in relation to a specific topic that is called as ACCA's PER, Practical Experience Record. What is practical experience record? How do you update practical experience record? 
and various certain questions and queries that is in your mind and how to resolve them and how to approach PER is what I'm going to discuss in this video. So let us first begin with what is ACCS PER all about? For that, I have create a, uh, created a small presentation that will help you understand what is PER and how you can achieve it. Let us go through that. So firstly, let us understand what is PER, uh, how do you achieve it and what are the steps that you need to follow to ensure that there is PER uh, in your ACCS portal. So in this presentation, I'll be walking you through what are the various steps that you need to follow to ensure that you are completing the PER. And after this, I will also show you ACCA's live portal uh, to help you how can you record PER and what you need to update, where you need to update. All of this information will be provided to you. And post which I will explain to you all the queries, all your queries and questions that have been posted into Anshul's uh, query form and I'll be taking all those questions and individually answering them. Uh, mind you, we have received more than 200 questions. We have consolidated all the questions and summarized them and I'll be choosing the top questions by through which you will everybody, all the 200 people who have asked those questions will be able to understand PER in a very simple nutshell. So let us go, uh, go through what is PER. Firstly, to become an ACCA member, you need certain skill sets. And achieving those skill sets are called as practical experience requirement. So, ICCA specifically talks that you need two kinds of skill sets. What are they? The first one is that you need to have a 36 months supervised experience in a relevant role. Okay, here relevant role is something that you need to note. I will talk about what is relevant role, uh, role shortly. But you need to understand that you need to gain 36 months. 36 months uh, means 3 years. So 3 years relevant supervised experience you need to take. You need to get relevant supervised experience. Which means you need to act in a specific role that ACCA act, uh, requires you to act in. That's what relevant role talks about. Let us look at what are relevant roles shortly. But the next one or the next requirement that you need to have is you need to complete nine performance objectives of which five are essentials and four are technicals. So you need to achieve nine performance objectives and out of these nine performance objectives, five of them are essentials, which means these are skills that you need, right? These are skills that you need and irrespective of whether you are an ACCA or not an ACCA, these are skills that you will gain and you will require if you are working in an organization. And these skills are very simple. These five essential skills are very simple like communication, networking, email, all those uh, specific skills that you will achieve irrespective of whichever organization you work. Those are the five essential skills. Now the four technical skills are those skills which you will achieve by working for a relevant role, which means if you work in an accountancy firm or an audit firm, you will achieve those four technical skills. And these four technical skills are skills like preparing financial statements, providing tax consultancy, preparing tax returns, providing cash flow information, providing budgets, preparing budgets, or uh, even preparing or auditing the financial statements, etc. So these skills are, these technical skills are already empaneled or are within your ACCA syllabus. So whatever uh, skills that you have achieved through your ACCA subject knowledge like uh, performance management or financial management all these skills you need to show that you have worked in those skill areas while you are working for a relevant role and that's what these four technical skills talks about. Taking this five essential skills is much easier because irrespective of wherever you work you're going to get that but the four technical skills are very important. So you need to think what are the four technical skills that I want to work in that I am passionate about and go and join an organization where those four technical skills that you are passionate about will be complied with and will be provided to you. How do you record a PER? It is very simple. If you log into your My ACCA uh, portal, in My ACCA portal, there is something which is called as My Experience or start recording your experience. I will show that to you in, uh, in, in, in a while. But if you just go to my experience 
tap automatically all of this with all these informations are there as well and you just need to start recording your experience and as well as start recording your practical uh, performance objective etc you can achieve your per in simple four steps four steps there are primarily main four steps that you need to be aware of to know what is per and how can you achieve it the first one is work in a relevant role what are relevant roles whatever you are studying in your subject which is accounting finance or audit accounting finance would include your financial management at the same time performance management as well which means your financial management relating to your cash flows budgets uh, wealth management etc performance management which would include costing budgeting forecasting all those things accounting and auditing accounting is where you prepare your accounts prepare your uh, uh, financial statements prepare your day to day accounting prepare your monthly reports all those things audits are how you audit those financial statements of various companies now okay do i have to work completely in a, a relevant role to gain my per not necessarily even if you are not in a full time accounting role let's say for example you are already a working professional you are working let's say in some uh, some company in that you are not in a accounting role you are not in the finance role but still you are passionate about accounting and finance and you started doing acca will i be able to claim my experience or the experience that i have gained by already working for an organization will that go for a waste it will not go for a waste why because even if you are not in full time accounting role there are other ways where you can demonstrate that you have achieved your per let's say for example you are teaching you are a passionate tutor you are an accounting tutor and you taught uh, uh, accounting and finance for a long period of time and you wanted to now do, uh, you know take up chartered accountancy qualification acca acca will give you one year of uh, uh, experience just because you were a tutor of accounting let's say you were working part time okay you were in uh, you know finance role itself but you were working only part time you were working only half a period of your time uh, only morning till afternoon you were working still you can gain half of that time acca says that even if you are not working full time that is from morning till evening or 12 hours 13 hours day then only you will complete 36 months no even if you are working half time you can take out of 36 months you can take 18 months you can take half time you can take one and a half years why because you are working for half time only so after you complete 3 years you have worked the entire 3 years half time you will get one and a half years and the other question that i always get is what if i have already started working and i joined acca will all those experience that i have gained will that go for a waste no it doesn't go for a waste even if you have gained experience prior registering to acca or while you are studying acs for the acc exams or after you have completed the exams all those three are valid which means if let's say you are a chartered accountant student you have done your articleship now you want to move to acc you can claim your articleship experience into your acc as experience so the moment you finish acc as subjects if you have finished your articleship you become a member directly or let us say you work for a corporate for 5 6 years now you want to do acca those 5 6 years you have worked for if you can prove that with your experience certificate you will get acca as a membership directly you don't need to do again after registering as an acca you don't need to do again the 3 years of experience which means you don't need to work for additional 3 years after registering for acca to show the per even before you register for acca you have gained some experience that is also given that is a flexibility provided by acca but let us say you are studying acca you have reached your uh, fundamental skills level like i started my acca journey uh, started my working experience while i was pursuing my uh, uh, you know uh, my skills exam applied skills exam and you started working for an organization even then that will be considered for your uh, work experience for your pers and after you have completed your 13 exams as well you can claim your per as well so acc gives you flexibility in terms of claiming the experience before you have registered for acc while you are pursuing and at the same time after you have completed as well 
then what are the relevant roles relevant roles are like finance accounting financial management performance management tax advisory etc are considered to be relevant roles and another important aspect is supervised experience which means there has to be some sort of a supervision on your work there has to be a manager who will be reviewing your work and that manager needs to constantly support you in your work experience which means that your acca's experience has to be signed off by your supervisor who is working in the same organization your supervised experience can be in any organization sector there is no compulsion that you have to be in uh, in a specific sector you can work in any sector manufacturing finance you can work in uh, banking you can work in uh, a service oriented industry you can work in it anywhere you can work in but you need to have a specific role that is aligned to in the in the case of accounting finance or audit or even tax it can be part time work and you can do multiple roles which means you don't have to complete acca within one organization you can do it in three different organizations four different organizations five different organization yes you can of course if you keep changing your roles that will affect your resume that is resume that is another matter but definitely you can change roles and still claim your experience partially relevant roles where only some of your time is spent on accounting and finance work time is pro rata allocated so as i said let us say you are a tutor here you are not you are just teaching acca or you are just teaching uh, your uh, accountancy or any other commerce subjects you are going to get only one year because that's only pro rata allocation but if you are working for a institution as a tutor part time you are do, taking care of their finance as well then uh, you can combine them both let us say you are doing internships or volunteering even that experience you can take up so which means you have worked for two months in a specific uh, role um for a specific chartered accountant for 3 4 months or in your graduation you have taken some finance related jobs you can even claim that and uh, there is a surprise to all of you viewers here in terms of the internships we uh, we as a we guide along with anshul mithal we are uh, starting something new wait for it and i will explain to you what is that short while the second step is to find a supervisor okay you have worked in a relevant role the now it's important for you to get someone who can vet that or qualify that you have worked in that specific role which means you need to have a senior this it can be your senior it can be your manager or it can be someone who has proved that who can prove that yes you are a so and so person and you have worked in this relevant role as required by acca so as a practical experience supervisor they need to supervise you and sign off on your performance objectives and 36 months of your time which you have completed in a relevant role so those supervisor needs to complete and sign off on behalf of you sign off for your uh, experience via the acca portal itself which means in your when you are in uh, when you are applying for per you go to your mi acca and you are uh, you apply for your experience and you apply for your performance objectives and that has to be sent to your supervisor the supervisor has to create an account in acca and then he needs to approve your experience your supervisor generally could be your line manager and you can have of course more than one supervisor because maybe when you are working for 3 years your supervisor changed roles you can ask someone else to also sign it uh your supervisor must be a qualified accountant to sign your performance objectives but your supervisor need not be a qualified accountant to sign off on your time or your 36 months that you have completed as i said let me just go back here as i said there are two skills that you require to complete pr one is the time which is the 36 months and one is another is the nine performance objectives this is your pos so your supervisor who should sign your performance objective has to be a qualified accountant he has to be an ifac member international federation of accounts member who are ifac qualified accountants CAs are like five qualified accountants. CPAs are like five qualified accountants. ACCAs, CPA Australia, CPA Canada. Anyone who has a professional accounting qualification, except certain uh, you know qualification that might not be within IFAC, uh, majority of them who are an IFAC member can sign off on your thirty six uh, on your performance objectives. 
So to complete your performance objective, to get that approved, it has to be your supervisor has to be a qualified accountant, like a chartered accountant, CAs, ACCAs, CPAs, Australia, CPA, USA, etc. But who signs off on your uh, 36 months, he need not be or he or she need not be a qualified accountant, which means he or she can be an MBA, he or she can be a graduate, your supervisor can be not be a qualified accountant, it can be an engineer, it can be your CEO without a accounting qualification, but then still they can sign off for your 36 months, but they have to be part of like within the same organization. So your supervisor need not be a qualified accountant for signing off on your 36 months, but they have to be a qualified accountant to sign off on your objectives. But what if you guys students are working in an organization where your supervisor or your line manager is not a qualified accountant and you want to get signed off on your performance objectives. That's where ACCA provides additional flexibility where you can ask another manager. So a person who is signing off on your performance objectives, your POs and the person who is signing off on your time can be two separate individuals. They can be two separate individuals. They need not be the same person. You can get your time qualified from a line manager and you can get your performance objective from your B, uh, B manager. What if it, you, you don't have anyone who is working uh, in your organization who is a qualified accountant? You can go externally. You can ask a consultant. You can ask any accountants. You can ask any auditors. And your accountants or your consultants or your auditors like me or like Anshul, they can sign off on your uh, on your performance objectives, but they need to work with your with your line manager. I have helped the students to get that done, but uh, along with the help of the line manager, I discuss with the line manager, get their to dos, and uh, they update the performance objectives, and then we work together to sign off on the objectives. But uh, I am not sure that I can do that for everybody because it, there are certain criteria to that. So you can reach out to anyone who's external to the organizations, accountants or uh, auditors to work with your line manager and to get that signed off on your objective. So he or she need not be a qualified accountant to sign off on your time, but he should be, he or she should be a qualified accountant to sign off on your POs. And if you don't have anyone within your organization who's a PO, you can reach out to someone external as well. This, the step three is an important step where you start recording. When do you start recording? The moment you join an organization, you can start recording. You don't need to put an end date. You just put your start date and automatically ACCA records how much you have completed. Your role should include your employer names and address details. It should include your jo the job title as well as a start date. As I said, the, there is no end date required until and unless you have moved from one job to another job. If you have moved to another job, you can update your old job with an end date and you can start with a new job. Once you have completed the requirement three years of experience and your objectives are also completed, you can update your supervisor details and you can ask them to register with ACCA portal. So you send them an invitation to your supervisor. Supervisor needs to register themselves and then only they will be able to sign off on your ACCA time as well as performance objectives. Step four is the target performance objectives. In this, I'm going to talk in detail about what are the performance objectives. So as I said, there are total nine performance objectives of which five are essential and four are technical. And these technical objectives, you will be given 17 of them. Again, out of 17 objectives, you have to take any four. And these 17 objectives are widespread. They are uh, they are like, you know, uh, preparing financial statements, preparing tax preparations, signing off or reviewing the tax preparations, preparing budgets. A lot of things are in, involved in 17 technical objectives, of which you just need four. Only four of them to get it done. 
Choose technical objectives that link to your everyday work as these will be easier to achieve. So ensure that whatever objectives that you are updating, ensure that it is relating to the work that you do on a daily basis. To give you an example, let us say you are auditor working in EY. You take one objective as an audit. Reviewing the financial statements, reviewing the budgets, reviewing the forecast, reviewing the taxes, etc. Don't take, you know, you are working in audit. Don't go and take preparation of financial management or cash flows because they are not relevant. Because it will be easier for you to update. Once you have decided which objectives you are going to target, you can start recording your progress in my experience. So as I said, your, your performance objective needs to be updated along with the work that you're doing. From day one itself, you can start recording your time. The moment you join a company, after you've got the offer letter, go and update that in your, uh, in your uh, uh, ACCA portal on, with, from the joining date. Do that before, even before you go and join the work. Because that will give you an objective or give you a focus on how you can progress and track your goals and achievements. And each time after you've completed certain set of work, right go and update that as an objective keep writing your objective you have three years to finish off your objective and it's just a one-time exercise it doesn't mean that in three years you have to keep updating 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 every year no it's just a one-time exercise where you update everything and send it out there are primarily three parts to the objectives a description a description is where you summarize the objective like what is all about what is the objective and why do you think that you have done this objective, etc. Then there is something called elements. In elements, you have five elements, which will specifically outline the task, the skills and the behaviors you must demonstrate to achieve the objectives. These will be like, you know, whether you have done so and so in your work, uh, whether you have proven uh, the skills that you have, what behavior you have demonstrated, etc. You need to write a 200 to 500 word statement where you demonstrate the achievement of the objective by providing examples of your work. So this is very important. Many of the students don't write this one. They just write what they have done or they just glorify. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've done. This is what I'm expecting to do all those stuff, but they never give examples from their work. Most of the times students who doesn't give examples from their work, their performance objectives tend to be rejected. The reason is because you need to pinpoint and showcase that you have done so and so work from your experience itself. So let us say that you have audited a specific group of company. You need to explain certain areas of when you are reviewing the financial statements. How did you review? What did you review and how it was supervised like that? You need to explain by giving examples from your day to day task, how you have achieved this particular objective. You need to submit all these objectives to your supervisor who will sign off. There is a, uh, you know, easy way to achieve this, which is that you will be given an exemption. There are various uh, companies out there where ACCA have partnered with. To give you an example, there is something called as EYGDS or EY. There is PWC, there is KPMG, etc. A lot of these companies are ACCA approved employers. So if you work with an ACCA approved employer, if you work with an ACCA approved employer, you don't need to give all these uh, big 200 word, 500 word statements. You don't need to showcase the skills that you have completed these objectives, etc. All you need to take up an exemption form, get it signed from the supervisor and send it out. And even then your supervisor have to be a qualified accountant because you are getting exemption only on the objectives, not on the time. So this exemption form should be signed up by a qualified accountant who is your supervisor and you need to attach along with that you need to attach your ACCA's approved employer status. So you go and speak out to your HR or your uh, directors who will be able to give you the certificate that is awarded to your employer by ACCA will prove that the so and so company you have worked with is an approved employer. You attach along with it, uh, take a copy of it, you attach along with your exemption form and send it out to ACCA they will approve your objectives. At the same time, the not only big companies or corporates are given approved employer status. There are also mid-sized audit firms, which I personally know of in, in the southern part of India are given approved employer status and any companies can 
get the approved employer status provided it will be reviewed and it will be vetted by ACCA themselves. So not everybody can become an approved employer status. There are certain criteria and conditions. ACCA will approach the com company and they will review the paperwork, their HR documentation and everything. And ultimately, they will be given the approved employer status. And ACCA reviews a lot of areas uh, because to ensure to protect the, their member status and the FDA status if to see if the students are getting a relevant experience. So they will see whether, you know, this employee is providing the related objectives that they are supposed to give like they are an audit firm they are an accounting firm are they getting enough uh, work or are they getting enough knowledge if they join this company etc so a lot of things will be reviewed by acca before they given approved employer status to any of the employee even if your employer holds a trainee development approval uh, with gold or platinum level then also your exemption will be awarded so if let's say your ACCA, if your employer is not an approved employer, but if they give get an ACCA certificate of a trainee development approval, but that has to be gold or platinum, then also you can get exemption from these particular objectives. And as I said, if you get op, uh, your objectives done, it's plain and simple, get an exemption form, give it out and it will be done. So to quickly summarize, Few pointers that you need to remember is to complete your PER, you need 36 months of supervised experience in relevant role. You need to achieve nine performance objectives. Five of them are essentials. Four of them are technical. You need to work in a relevant role like accounting, finance or audit related. Your supervisor must be a qualified accountant to sign off your POs, but he does not need to be a qualified accountant to sign off on your time. If you are working for an approved employer, or an employer which holds trainee development approval of gold or platinum level, you will be able to claim your exemption from them, from these objectives. And now for the surprise elements, let me just explain to you what we are going to talk about. This. So for the surprise element, I know that many of you students are actually uh, trying to work along with your studies. Many of you are uh, Anshul Sir subscribers. You, I know that you guys are trying to scale up your career and grow and get a job in various organizations. So me and Anshul, we are working together. We guide and Anshul Sir, we are working together to help you guys to get your experience and as well as internship recorded with the relevant organizations. So we, Anshul Sir is a chartered accountant. I am an FCC, FCCA. We have various connections among various uh, uh, chartered accountancy firms or even big organizations. We will help together, we will work together to the students who are in need of these experience and who are desiring to start their working career. And we are working together to create a pilot platform where we will help you guys to achieve your skill sets through our closed network and you will be able to achieve your PER, not just after you complete ACCA, but while you're pursuing ACCA, because knowledge is very important, but at the same time, experience is also important. Experience will contribute towards your knowledge. So we are working towards that and we'll come up shortly with our detailed plan. I'm sure you will, it will be a big success for you and it will be a huge opportunity for all of you viewers over there. So now let's go to an ACCA portal and see how you need to record your uh, uh, PERs directly from your ACCA website. So this is uh, once you log into your ACCA, my ACCA account, this is how your portal will look like. What you need to do is you need to go to your dashboard and if you come down to your dashboard, there is something called as record your practical experience, which is under your common actions. You just click here to record your practical experience. It will take you to something called as ACCA's PER. Um, it will automatically log in to your credentials using your credentials. And once you oh, once this gets opened, this is how your uh, PER page will look like. And this is the page which is called as My Experience. So as you can see, it is mentioning Welcome to My Experience. And it's mentioning what is the requirement for PER and things like that. Uh, ACCA's uh, web this website also gives you what are the requirements for your PER like uh, your 36 months experience as we discussed your nine performance objectives 
five essentials, all of these informations are detailed here. The next one is you just click save and continue. And uh, this is how your information will take you to. The first thing is that you need to, uh, your employer, you as an employer, uh, you they need to uh, supervise on your, uh, on your PER skills. You need to add the name of the employer, their address and their zip code, etc. So let us try to give our dummy details here and go to the next thing so that you know information. So I have added the relevant details, the employer name, the address and uh, the city and the state and in uh, and the country in India or your relevant country that you need to update and then the postal code. Once you do that, you just click save and next. So once you click uh, your uh, save and next, you need to update uh, your job title. So I'm just going to write it as CFO and uh, you can mention the dates, uh, you can mention uh, the average hour per week. So let's say that uh, uh, our date we started is as of today uh, and end date. You don't need to mention end date because if this is your current role, current role, you can leave it blank. You can say what is your average hours per week. So let us say that there are eight hours so and five hours a week. So which means it's uh, uh, 40 hours. So here you are given 35 hours is your maximum because uh, they reduce the uh, five hours of your lunchtime as well. So, uh, so that also will be removed. And here, hundred uh, percent. Are you an approved employer? No. Is this an audit role? Uh, no. Is this a lecturing role? No. So, if you can see, your lecturing role can also be consist considered here, and you will be given twelve months of uh, experience as mentioned in the help button. So, once you click uh, save next. So see, you can see mentioned here, your supervisor no, uh, role is mentioned. So I'll just mention my name. So this is my uh, subordinates uh, uh, account. So I'll be mentioning my name who, who uh, and I will be supervising him. And, and I'll, I'll consider as the CEO. So I can send and invite. Right. So if you see here, I have uh, we have sent the invite. Now, once this is done, as you can see, your employment is started. Then this is your time of your employment. Like it shows how much months you have completed. And here you can show you can see you, you can see the performance objectives, like how many objectives you have completed in your relevant 36 months period. So look at here. Let's go to the view objectives to see what are the objectives that we have. As you can see, as I said, there are five objectives which are essentials. So if you read the five objectives, these are ethics, stakeholder relationship, strategy and innovation, governance and risk control, leadership, etc. All these five um, roles will be required in any of the organization that you go majority of the times. So uh, you work in any department, you would be required to have certain kind of ethics and professionalism. You would have a lot of relationship with various folks, your customers, your boss, your stakeholders, your shareholders, your investors, your traders, everything will come in stakeholder relationship management. You will implement certain kind of uh, innovation and strategy to progress in your life uh, or in your career and you will have certain kind of control or risk that you would implement in your work itself and you will show certain, showcase certain kind of leadership role as well. So these are five um, essential requirements that you will be required to write about. And here out of 17, you are required to write four technical objectives. So if you see your, your technical objectives are coming directly from what? Coming directly from your uh, subject knowledge. So corporate and business reporting is your strategic business reporting. So preparing financial records, financial reports, preparing external financial statements, uh, accounting, processing accounting, financial management, performing capital working, uh, evaluating investment decisions managing the financial risk of a company, management accounting, you will be required to monitor performance, standard costing, all those things are mentioned. Taxation here is mentioned about tax assessments, audit and assurance, they are mentioned about preparing uh, the audit and assurance process, uh, doing evaluation of audit evidence, review reporting, etc. You have advisory consulting uh, as well, where if you are working in a consulting uh, company, you can mention business advisory as well. Even if you're working or doing certain kind of digital innovations or performing some kind of BI roles, business analytics roles, 
business intelligence roles you can uh, do that as well in your performance objectives like data analysis and decision support this is a new age and these objective digital uh, data digital and technology was added very recently because the world is changing there are a lot of bi tools that you can learn with do keep following us to know what are the various bi tools i am myself i am registered as an altrix core certified provider uh, and i am learning python so it needs to uh, you need to add on your skills so you as a chartered accountant just because you are a finance guy doesn't mean that you don't need to learn technology learning technology and keep upgrading your skill is important and acca even uh, recognizes that and if you look at here a brief is mentioned about what you should do you need to be in your own words it has to be uh, the words has to be clear and concise you need to give 200 to 500 sentences and uh, you need to you know get individual state statements signed off uh, and your supervisor need to read that individual statements or individual objectives and elements and need to keep uh, updating them let us take one objective as an example and see what is there inside it so if you go inside uh, as you can see there is a description of what you have done what all you have done and whether you have done act uh, whether you have done this uh, a part whether you have acted diligently honestly whether you have acted integrity in your ethics and professionalism objective there are give they are giving you examples of how you can showcase this and they are telling which exams in fact you will showcase these kind of ethics and professionalism and once you go inside you click this you write the start objective part and once you go inside start objective you can start writing about the various skills so you can see here uh, on your right hand side your description you need to claim uh, if you click on the claim button uh, it will claim you will be able to claim this particular objective and if you are claiming a part your statement here should prove that you are worthy enough to claim the a part so if you are going to click here and claim it your statement should explain how you can claim this a part you can mention the examples you can mention the examples you can claim the relevant here elements here as well as explain with the examples how you have claimed these particular elements you can also go to the linked exams and see uh, you know claim relevant and also write about all your professional and ethics exam here and as a uh, acca student it is very important and very good if you finish your professional ethics module before you come and uh, start doing this particular exercise so before you claim your objectives or before you cl start claiming your work part just try to do the professional ethics module that will give you a better information so i hope you would have got all the information relating to how you go to my acc and start claiming this once you update all this information you just need to save the statement and keep updating for your each and every objective that you're going to claim four technicals as well as five essentials once you do that you complete it and you will be able to send it to your supervisor and there you will be able to uh, select the email address of the supervisor the name and details and an invitation will be sent to the email of the supervisor the supervisor need to open that and accept each of the objective by updating them individually so he will go here inside each of your objective and he needs to approve them individually he cannot approve all of them together he needs to click each of the objective and approve them now let's go to the final part of the video in this uh, topic i'm going to talk about the various questions that you guys have contributed uh, firstly let me thank you all for giving me such a wide range of questions and i can see your eagerness to learn new thing so we have received more than 200 questions so it's not possible to give explanation to each and every question but what we did is me and anshul sat together and summarized all of these questions and identified what are the top questions that has to be answered in my first part of the video i have already answered many of the questions but or the remaining questions i'll be answering now firstly let me thank you all for asking so many questions this has given us a lot of energy to answer all these questions so i hope i'll be able to answer each of every question if you still are if you feel that your questions are unanswered just give us a call and i will share you all of our details and you can give us a call and schedule uh, in fact time with 
uh, your lecturers like me or our own lecturers or even Anshul sir to get more clarity on the questions that is going through in your mind. If you look at here, these are the various questions that we have received out of which five of the questions I've already answered. And you, if you have any questions, you can just rewind back and go back and watch the first part of the videos. The next topics that I'm going to uh, talk about is the sixth point. Uh, here I've answered this question with the, for the first half, how to experience, uh, how to register the experience of PER on ACA, uh, ACCA portal that I've already registered. And is any certificate required from employer? Of course, yes, you need to get an experience certificate and to record the PER, you don't need to show any certificate. You just need to update the employer details. But at the same time of membership, they will ask you to send you certain experience certificate along with your uh, experience as well as your PER objective that you're submitting to ACCA. So at the time when you're applying for membership, they will ask for all these certificates and that's the time where you upload it. But at the same time, you can upload them in your portal along with your uh, uh, my experience record as well. The seventh point is, is it necessary to do PER from a whole country or it can be done from anywhere? It can be done from anywhere around the world, from any organization that you work with. Only question is here is, are you working in a relevant role? And as, as I already explained to you, relevant role is where you are working in a finance, audit or accounting specific roles. Which type of jobs can be counted in PER? As I said, there is a lot of flexibility that is awarded. Teaching jobs is considered, finance related jobs is considered, auditing jobs is considered, management accounting jobs is considered. So various jobs are considered, but you need to be careful that what kind of job you are doing. Let us say, for example, you are in a sales work, you are doing a sales and marketing related work that might not be considered on a full scale as a, uh, as a, to con uh, as a time perspective, 36 months, you will not be able to claim, but you will be still able to claim half of it. So even that will be considered as a part time and uh, a few of the work can be taken into consideration, but not all kind of job will be taken into consideration for your PER. So you have to be very careful on which type of job you are working for. Try to get your experience from a relevant job so that your PER is done smoothly and easier. If a student is working somewhere accounting or finance firm, can he or she, she use the experience in PER? Of course, yes. As I said, ACCA gives you a flexibility where a student can start their PER along with their job. So if you are working for an article ship firm and if you are working under a chartered accountant or you are working in any mid-sized audit firm, that is relevant job. You are working in a relevant job and still that will be considered for your PER. After how many exams PER should be started? Uh, there is no mandatory rule that you need to start your PER after your XYZ number of exams. You can start your experience even before you start ACCA or the moment you register for ACCA, you can start work, start working, but you can also start working after completing your skill level. So it's upon your interest when you want to start and your necessity of, of going into a job. Many of the students, uh, you know, will have to go and take up a job because of to, to afford for the tuitions or anything. And in fact, there are many companies like EY or KPMG, they do sponsor for your ACCA qualification as well. But uh, as a matter of fact, I would as an advice, if you are a student who is studying the fundamental levels and foundation levels, if you are studying your foundation, just focus on your foundation, you build a base. If you do not have necessity to go and join for a job, just start doing ACCA initial part of it. Once you are completed five or six exams, uh, or maybe you are completed your degree, you can start uh, working. And there is no mandatory rule that you cannot, uh, you know, study and do work along the same time. I did it. I was always doing multitasking while I was uh, while I was studying for ACCA. If I can do it, I believe that everyone around the world can do it. If a student is working in a small accounting firm, when can she apply for PER and how can she approach to a qualified person who can sign the PER? This is a very good question. Uh, I get a lot of this question, a similar question, always. If a student is working in a small accounting firm, firstly, they need to understand who is, who is there, whom they are reporting to. If that student is reporting to a qualified chartered accountant, then you can approach your senior itself to get both of your sign, the time as well as your objective. But unfortunately, let's say your, 
your senior whom you are reporting to in a small accounting firm, if not is a qualified chartered accountant, you need to find someone else within your same organization or in fact your partner or anybody else who is senior to your immediate supervisor uh, who can be qualified and try to reach out to them uh, for your PER sign. I am sure that if you approach to the right person with the right mentality, they will not, you know, uh, they are not going to reject your request. But it might be required that you have to explain them the process. If they have any concerns, if you are a person who is working in an accounting firm and you want support to talk to your supervisor, uh, reach out to us. We will definitely help you with that. General cases, nobody, a qualified accountant, they know what is ACCA. And if you explain to them the process, they will definitely help you with it. But you need to reach out to the right person. Time perspective, anybody can sign off. But the objective perspective, you need to get a qualified. So talk to your relevant qualified professional. They will be able to do it. And why objective was mentioned as a, it has to be a qualified person? Because the qualified person will know the pain of, of this process. They will understand this process much better. And they know the pain because they have already gone through it. If it is ACCA themselves, it is well and good. But if it's CA as well, CEO also have article ship. So they would have also gone through a similar process. So they would understand what you would be going through and they will definitely help you. Do teaching and accounting and finance can be used in experience. I have already explained this 12 months. You can claim up to 12 months. You can claim which is better option to do uh, uh, to do PER from a mid-sized firm or a big four. Uh, see, there are both benefits as well as negatives, pros as well as cons. If you do your PER from a mid-sized firm, if you are a student, you get a lot of time to study. But if you are working in big fours, your study might get impacted. But I did my experience, my started my experience in a small mid-sized firm after six months, then I moved to a big four. So I didn't find it that difficult to work to manage work as well as my studies because I was doing my uh, week offs or during my free time I used to sit and study. So you can manage it but you need to manage it well if you're working in a big four organization but in your mid-sized you will have you will get more time. Uh, I would still say that working for a big four organization would give you the upper edge because your resume gets added a lot of skill set. So if you are go thinking to fast track your progress to your career definitely go for big four and at the same time big four organizations majority of them all the big four organizations are approved employers so your objectives will get exempted so all you need to concentrate is about you know finishing up the task of your work but in mid-sized audit firm you need to do all the kind of process that you have to supposed to do for PER. Can all three years of PER should be completed at once or can it be done in breaks? PER doesn't mean that your objectives part doesn't mean that you have to do it for separate for each three years. No, PER uh, objective is a one time exercise. The time is different. Objective is different time. You can do it while you are working in an organization. Automatically your time gets recorded after 36 months. Your time part is done. Your objective part is a one single exercise where for the entire three years you are claiming that. So in your entire three years process, if you have worked for a for a company which was an approved employer, you can claim an exemption for that because you have worked for an approved employer. And if you are working for a mid-sized organization, doesn't mean that every year you need to sit and update your objectives for each of the year. No. Objectives is a one-time exercise where you do it for your entire three years. If you have worked in that particular objective, if you have achieved the technical skills in any of the working experience that you have gained for the past three years, you can claim your objectives. So it doesn't mean that you need to break or you can complete it at once. You can take your time to complete it. Let's say the moment you have finished one of the objective, start writing about the objective because it will be fresh in your mind. Let us say you have prepared financial statements in one year, just update that and update with the examples so that it is done from that part. You have focused on that objective and you have completed it. I would say that complete in breaks so that it's easier and it will be fresh in your mind when you are completing that each of the time. How much a student can earn while doing PER? Um, it depends uh, if you are working for a big four organization and uh, you are a graduate, then you should get uh, approximately 2.5 uh, to 3 lakhs per annum more than that. But if you are working for a mid-sized organization, it will be uh, it should not be that much. It should be maybe as an internship. It might become considered as an internship like how CA articles go through. So it can be like 5,000 per month, 6,000, 10,000 per month, etc. 
I personally believed that the initial part of your career, you should not focus on money. So you should not think of earning now. You get your work, you get your experience, finish off three years, then you become a member, then your automatically your money will come to you. For a CA student converted to ACCA, do see uh, completed CA articleship can be used as PR? Of course, yes. And ACCA provides that flexibility. Uh, you just need to take that uh, CA certificate and submit it along with your application. And at the same time, but still you need to complete your objective. So you need to showcase that you have completed the objective. So for that, you st still have to write that 200, 500 words that you are going to do in your uh, CA article. So whatever you have done, you need to update that. And that has to be approved by a qualified accountant. Just because you have converted from CA to ACCA doesn't mean that you don't have to do the objectives. You still have to do the objectives, but the article ship will be considered. But still you have to go through that same process. How to find jobs for PEA? Okay, uh, as I said, this is a very, uh, you know, interesting question and many students ask me, ask us this question. And uh, this is where, you know, we and Anshul, uh, Anshul sir are joining hands together to working on a project. Uh, we are planning to talk to various chartered accountants that we have met uh, and networked along and to help you uh, place and give you internship jobs in various these or various of these CA firms. So we are working on a project. Something new is coming up. We'll come up with a detailed explanation of that. Keep watching us and keep supporting us. We'll definitely help you guys on this. But uh, to answer the question in a simple way, how to find jobs for PER? Uh, keep searching for jobs in Naukri.com, LinkedIn or even in fact any of the job portals. In fact, talk to your uh, friends or talk to your seniors, talk to, you know, someone who is a chartered accountant, go to a CA firm, understand if there is any job. You, If you start finding that, you will definitely get it. Talk to your CA friends if they are working in an article ship firm, if they will, you know, take up any ACCAs as well. As I said, the first stepping stone of your career, don't even think of, don't even think of the money part. Automatically, once you gain your experience, money will come to you. You just focus on the work. Get the experience recorded in you. Whether uh, experience from different employers can be counted as a PER? Yes. Even if you work in three years in three different companies, still it will be counted for your PER. How can student apply in Big Four for PER? Um, there are Naukri.coms, there are various job portals, there is um, Big Four organizations, uh, you know, career pages as well where you go directly and uh, create your resume and apply. The first part is to create a resume, a good resume and mention all your strong aspects as well as your uh, as well as your achievements and what is your qualification, everything you create a strong resume, add on your objectives, add on whatever you're doing, etc. And then apply for various career opportunities, definitely you'll get it. An easier way to get a job in Big Four organizations is to get referred. So if you know someone who is there in Big Four organizations, uh, send them their resume, ask them to refer when there is a job opportunity, definitely they will help you. Uh, many of the times in India, job opportunities in Big Four happens after the June month. So uh, wait for January to June or March to get over and then start applying because that's when the hiring is quite extensively happening. Keep following uh, the careers page of various Big Four organizations because they do come up with a lot of, um, you know, uh, job opportunities. They do come up with a lot of walk-in interviews where you can walk into the uh, firm and, and ask for a job, etc. And try to, you know, uh, send your resume to various HRs out there. They will definitely help you with it. But important factors, add on your skills. Um, if you want to get a job in Big Four, uh, various data analytics skills as well, you can learn free of cost in your YouTube or in, in any other education portal. Definitely, you know, it will be a better uh, way to get a job in, in Big Four organizations or in any other companies that you wish to. Can past job done before starting ACCA be counted? As I've already explained this, uh, ACCA gives you flexibility. So uh, taking an experience before registering for ACCA will also be counted for your PER. What is the best time to start PER? Um, again, if you are in this, in a need of a job where you want to support your occasions and etc., immediately start searching for job uh, and apply for a jobs. Uh, if you feel that you know you are at the beginning level of ACCA and you want to concentrate first more on your studies, add on your technical skills and you finish at least part of your sub syllabus, let's say uh, the fundamental levels like uh, your financial management, financial reporting, audit paper, tax paper. If you complete these papers, it's going to be easy for you to find a job because you are coming up with the relevant skill sets. 
So easiest way to find a job is once you are part qualified, if you have finished few papers of ACCA. But if you are in a desperate need of a job, then at least if you are a graduate, it's easily gone. You will be able to uh, easily find a job. But if you are at the completed just your 11th or 12th, then I would suggest wait for you to come finish off your part level of subject of ACCA and then you apply for the job. Is bond signing mandatory if asked by ACCA firm? Um, see, uh, it depends upon company to company, firm to firm. If they require you to sign a bond, you have to do it. And if you feel that you don't want to work in a company where you have to sign a bond, then it's better not to enter them. Because once you enter and you don't, uh, and they sign, they make you sign the bond and you don't, uh, you know, stay for a long time, then you have to pay them back some money and things like that, some training related cost, etc. And it will be related to only training expenses. So they will mention what will be the amount that you they have you have to give them, um, but it's better even if uh, you know you are signing a bond. If the firm is good, if you are getting good relevant experience and your job skills are getting added, there is no harm in signing the bond and working for that company. Any other informations or questions, uh, you can frame and give your valuable feedback. Yes, of course. So always remember one important aspect when you are doing your PER. Don't focus on money, focus on the experience. Even if you're working for even thousand rupees per month, if you are working in a relevant organization, this thousand rupees can become one lakh rupees per month in a short span of three to four years because you're gaining relevant experience. And gaining relevant experience is much more important than gaining money if you are in the initial part of your career. Focus on the money only after you complete your three years because once you become a member, the sky is the limit. But till then, you need to gain relevant experience. If you have further questions, we are always happy to help you. So I hope uh, we are able to give you justice about explaining the PER process. If you feel that you have got enough knowledge and enough information, do subscribe to this channel and keep following us and give us your valuable feedback and let us know what more you would like to know. If, I have, if you feel that I have not answered any of these questions, Please mention that in your comment box and I'm happy to take up that question and we'll definitely respond to you or we can come up with additional videos like this to help you progress in your career. Wish you everlasting success. All the very best. Thank you guys for the opportunity. See you.